Planet of the Fakes, and Pig Star HH News. Judge Tammy Kemp hugs praise with Amber Geiger after jury sentences her to 10 years. It was an emotional day of testimony, outbursts and one very moving victim impact statement at the Frank Crowley Courts building. A jury sentenced former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger, who was convicted of murdering her neighbor, Botham Shem Jean in his own home to 10 years in prison. A crowd outside of the courtroom started screaming even before the decision was read. Judge Tammy Kemp asked bailiffs to tell them to cut that out. Jean's family sat silently after the sentence was read, and looked shell-shocked, according to CBS 11 producer Kelsey Midauer, who covered the trial. Supporters of the Jean family started screaming outside the hallway, no justice, no peace. Civil rights groups and activists outside the courtroom told CBS 11 News that the sentence is insufficient. Eventually the Jean family met with jurors in the hallway. Not long after, Botham's younger Brandt delivered a heartfelt victim impact statement, telling Geiger, I forgive you. I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. I love you just like anyone else. I am not going to say I hope you die just like my brother did, I personally want the best for you. I don't even want you to go to jail, because that's exactly what Botham would want to. Again I love you, as a person. He then asked if it was okay for him to hug Geiger. So he did. This is a moment so very few have ever witnessed. The brother of a murder victim asking the judge to hug the person who took his brother's life. Credit, CBS 11 News. Botham's mother, Allison Jean addressed reporters, saying, Yesterday we saw the conviction. Today, 10 years in prison. That 10 years in prison is for reflection and for her to change her life. But there is much more to be done by the city of Dallas. The corruption we saw must stop. Dallas County District Attorney John Crusoe commented Geiger sentencing. In over 37 years I've seen so many cases, I have long stopped trying to guess what a jury would do and I have long accepted their judgment. Personally I expected perhaps longer, but I respect what they did. They gave us their time, they gave this case their attention and they reached what they thought was a just verdict. On Tuesday a jury of eight women and four men found Geiger guilty of murdering Jean, 26. The court heard more evidence during the sentencing phase, including racially insensitive text messages Geiger shared with other officers, including her former partner and extramarital lover SGT. Martin Rivera. During the 2018 Martin Luther King Day Parade a message sent to Geiger said, When does this end lol? She responded, When MLK is dead, oh wait. Prosecutors also showed the jury some of Geiger's alleged social media posts that promoted police violence against civilians. One banner she posted said, I wear all black to remind you not to mess with me, because I'm already dressed for your funeral. Attorneys representing the Jean family in a civil suit said the new evidence showed Geiger's true intent. We believe that it paints a completely different picture than the crying, tearful, remorseful person who was on the stage, said lawyer Lee Merritt. Before the jury entered court Wednesday morning, Judge Kemp clarified that the prosecution had no objection to the defense request that sudden passio then be included as part of the charge against Geiger. Texas law defines sudden passion as passion directly caused by an arising out of provocation by the individual killed. If the jury accepts that Geiger's actions were taken in the heat of the moment, it could reduce the sentencing range to 2t. Oh, 20 years. Testimony in the sentencing phase resumed just before 10 a.m. The first person to take the stand for the prosecution was Alexis Stossel, Botham's friend and former Harding University college mate. The second person to go before the court Wednesday was Botham's father, Bertram Jean. My son Botham's dear to me. I reflect on the great memories, having him as a babe, he told the jury. Bertram Jean testified how he kept his son by his side from a very young age. It didn't matter what time it was, I just wanted him with me, he said as he broke down crying. He questioned, how could that happen to us, our family? How could we have lost both them? Such a sweet boy. He tried his best to lead a good, honest life. He loved God. He loved everyone. How could this happen to him? After Bertram Jean's testimony the prosecution rested and the defense announced they were calling Geiger's mother to the stand. The judge then called a 20-minute recess. At 11 a.m., Amber's mother, Karen Geiger, took the stand. After testifying about the family structure and her divorce from Amber's father, Karen Geiger testified that a man she was dating in 1995 sexually assaulted Amber when she was six years old. She testified the man was later arrested for indecency with a child and pled guilty. Karen Geiger testified that her daughter quit college because she was excited about an opportunity with the Dallas Police Department. 
She found out that there was a spot in the academy and she said, Mom if I don't take it now I may lose my chance, so she went on to apply for the school, to be a police officer, Karen Geiger told the court. Defense lawyers then turned their attention to the night of Botham Jean's shooting. Karen Geiger said her daughter called her but, I had trouble understanding her. She was crying. She was very upset. I couldn't understand her when she first told me. Quote, before becoming upset Amber's mother said of the shooting, she feels very bad about it. She feels bad about it. Amber's older sister, Alana, took the stand and testified about how the molestation affected Amber and the family and the subsequent counseling they underwent. She said her sister, was so happy that she was going to be able to have a career where she could help others in need. As to becoming a police officer Alana Geiger told the court her sister, was so happy that she was going to be able to have a career where she could help others in need. Her sister then said, she's expressed to me how she feels bad spending time with her family because he, both them, can't be with his. Several officers from the Dallas Police Department then testified on Amber's behalf. First up was Officer Kathy Odiambo who said she knew Geiger for more than 10 years. She testified, she always wanted to be a police officer. Everybody around her knows that was her dream since she was a little girl. Quote, Dallas Detective Rhonda Rickison, Geiger's field training officer, then went before the court. She testified that she was a part of Geiger's fourth phase training. Amber came to me ready to be out on the streets. It was a pleasure to train, to sit with her, she said. When Dallas SWAT officer Thomas McPherson took the stand he explained that he and Geiger were in the same academy class and later worked the same shift on the force. Saying Geiger was, someone you could depend on, he was asked about the evening of July 7 when police officers in downtown Dallas were ambushed and five of them lost their lives. Officer McPherson said he and Geiger went to El Centro College and even though they heard gunshots after getting out of the squad car, I distinctly remember Amber being so brave. McPherson also testified about working with Geiger on the DPD Crime Reduction Team, CRT, agreeing that she was a hard worker who he had no doubt always had his back. The prosecution then questioned McPherson about a text thread that several CRT officers are a part of. Referring to a derogatory name members of the text thread used for a supervisor prosecutor said, you just displayed to this jury that she, Geiger, was a respectful person and she respected other. S and I said, it has been times when she has not been as respectful of the individuals that supervise her, and other individuals, either with the Dallas Police Department and or in the community. McPherson agreed the statement was correct but said actions like that are something he felt was out of character for Geiger. After McPherson two of Geiger's friends took the stand and testified as to her good character. Maribel Chavez, a high school friend who said she met Geiger during orchestra practice, said Geiger was typically bubbly and extroverted, but that since she killed Jean, it's L. Ike you shut her light off. She described her friend as selfless, caring and a protector of those around her. The last person on the stand before the break was Lawanda Clark, a self-professed recovering crack cocaine addict. She said when she encountered Geiger during a 2017 drug bust she was issued a citation. Clark testified, she said, now you can do one of two things with this ticket. She said, you can either continue on the road that you're on or you can let this be your ticket out, and that's what I chose to do. Quote, Clark said she eventually graduated from a community drug treatment program and Geiger attended the ceremony. Court went into recess and resumed around 1.35 p.m. with the judge inquiring as to counsel's allotted times for closings. Judge Kemp then made it clear that there should be no conversations, comments or outbursts in the gallery. I know you all are all emotionally invested in this, but it is really not fair for you to have commentary to the testimony that's being provided, she said. The triers of fact are sitting in the jury box and whatever commentary you're having or saying is not coming from the witness stand, so it shouldn't be art of their consideration. Judge Kemp went on to further say there would be consequences if her instructions were violated. If you have commentary or you have reactions to the